Were you involved with ATIP? Yes, I was. In what, uh, in what respect were you involved with ATIP? As a consultant. And then the OSAP program was where I was actually a subcontractor. As an employee here, uh, we were a subcontractor to Bigelow uh, Aerospace Advanced Space Studies, BAASS, uh, on the OSAP, which was the other side of ATIP. ATIP was handled out of the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, and OSAP was at the Defense Intelligence Agency. And that's the actual funded program that received uh, enough congressional appropriations to hire outside contractors like uh, Bass and EarthTech to work on the programs. Okay, so you 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 alt you ultimately worked for were part of the Pentagon's UFO program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of what kind of stuff did you do for the Pentagon UFO program? Oh, basically, uh, what I just discussed was. Uh, we, we had, um, well, first of all, we gave technical advice to the field investigation. We'd get information in, data on reports, and we would do physics analysis and uh, report back on what, we, what our opinion or assessments on the field investigations and data was on a variety of observations and encounters of UFO phenomenon. But uh, one big main part of our work was to hire uh, 38 independent uh, expert scientist uh, in industry, academia, and government uh, to write uh, defense intelligence reference documents on future transformation concepts for concepts that we can envision in the year 2050 and take what we have in our existing really advanced physics and really advanced uh, aerospace technology and evolve it to the future of 2050 and see what it looks like and see if we can compare, see if we have any hopes of, uh, of developing an advanced technology in 2050 that's comparable to uh, the Tic Tac UFOs that the USS Nimitz and Roosevelt encountered and the other type of UFOs that the other uh, naval warships have encountered out in the Middle East and uh, elsewhere around the, uh, around the Pacific and Atlantic. Okay, so you said that part of your job at OSAP, right? OSAP? Yeah, OSAP. Uh, OSAP was you would get reports and you guys would study and analyze the physics behind those reports. What kind of reports are you talking about? Uh, when, was a laser, when was a Navy laser weapon report about the development of uh, the breakthroughs in solid state laser weapon technology? Another one was a, a paper I co-authored as a second author on extra space dimensional warp drive. So the lead author got his PhD in physics at Baylor University in Waco, Texas on looking at extra space dimensions and drawing on vacuum energy, quantum vacuum energy from the extra dimensions to power a warp drive. So we co-authored a paper. Then I co Then I wrote uh, as a single author a paper on traversable wormholes. And, uh, and then I wrote a paper on uh, uh, how to explore the quantum vacuum to produce negative vacuum energy that creates, that you would need to create a wormhole in a warp drive. And uh, then I uh, authored a paper on anti-gravity propulsion physics using general relativity, because all that is all wrapped up into the same physics. Uh, other people talked about uh, smart materials, uh, nanomaterials, uh, MHD aerospace propulsion systems, uh, hypersonic propulsion, um, uh, invisibility cloaks using metamaterials, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There were 38 reports. I don't have the list of them. Here. I have them. I, well, I have, I don't have all of them. Only a few, I think, were released, but I have uh, the one on traversable wormholes. Uh, okay, one uh, quick thing about OSOP. So, um, how long did you work with OSOP? Uh, five years, from 2007 to 2012. And then it was shut down, right? Yeah, uh, because we couldn't get, uh, we couldn't, the, the DIA director and executive director were against renewing it for another five years. So they were supposed to get another five-year appropriation from the Senate uh, through the defense uh, appropriations bill, but they turned it down because they were not given enough uh, complete information to understand what the full scope of the program was. And the reason for that is we were not sure that they would be accepted or receptive of this type of program. So they were only briefed on superficial aspects of the program that they misconstrued to be a waste of money 
or just, you know, unexplained, you know, why are we putting that kind of money into something that got 20, 38 technical papers come out of it? Well, it was much more than 38 technical papers. And, um, and the problem is, is that you have a problem with uh, very biased closed minds where the UFO subject concerned, especially if you've got military and civilian leadership that have been raised and educated as evangelical uh, Christians or other religious, uh, uh, other religious uh, cults or whatnot, where they object to UFOs as being satanic. Totally. Got, and, it. Got it. You, um, no, nothing that you worked on, though, during those five years was considered top secret, correct? It was. It was top secret SCI. It was TSSCI, Sensitive Compartmentalized Information. So the doc... It was, S it was a TS slash SCI. So the documents I have in my possession, uh, the, the 38 uh, reports... They're unclassified except for the laser weapon win, which is now... That particular uh, report is now... I think it got unclassified because or declassified because the technology is now old and out of date. It's been replaced by more recent solid-state weapon technology. That report... Well, the, that report was basically a survey of the existing state-of-the-art of, of solid-state laser weapons that the Navy and other elements of the DOD have been developing and deploying for testing. Okay, so that paper is now old. But anyway, all the other papers, of course they were unclassified, but that's the nature of those papers. We wanted the authors of those papers to be allowed to publish those papers in the peer-reviewed uh, journals that uh, correspond to their professional discipline. So... We deliberately wanted those papers to be unclassified so that the authors can publish those. As a matter of fact, my boss, Hal Putoff, had already published his, uh, I, let me think, yeah, he had already published his space-time metric engineering paper in the Journal of the British Interplanetary Society during the OSAP program, but before his DIRD got published by the DIA. My, uh, my paper on warp drives, wormholes, and uh, negative vacuum energy, the, the quantum tomography of looking at negative vacuum energy in a variety of uh, squeeze state systems, uh, that didn't get published until uh, 2013 in the Journal of the British Interplanetary Society. It was also a paper that I presented uh, as a, in, the, uh, in, the 20, in the 2011 DARPA NASA 100-Year Starship Symposium in Tampa in uh, Orlando, Florida. And um, that, that was in September, the end of September 2011. So I presented that DIRD paper as a symposium proceedings. That symposium proceedings was being published along with the others by JBIS, the Journal for the, of the British Interplanetary Society, after they underwent the usual peer review process for acceptance. Were, was ALSAP and ATIP, did they coexist at the same time? Uh, pretty much ATIP came before OSAP because of the Nimitz encounter. So almost almost simultaneously, a little, uh, ATIP came a little bit before, but they coordinated. And they both ended in 2012? No. A no, ATIP never ended. ATIP never ended? Nope. It's still going on today? Yep. Who runs but it? In that name. <laughs> oh, they changed the name? Change names, change location, change leadership. So oh, what's, the new, goes on. what's the new name? I can't tell you that. <laughs> so the reason you know this is because you are still on the inside. Oh, I'm I'm a consultant still. Yeah, you are I'm still a consultant. You are still a consultant for the program formerly known as ATIP. Correct. And you're saying it's. It's been renamed, it still exists, and it's still being run out of OUSDI? Uh, I won't confirm where it's being run out of, but generally an intelligence program, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, maybe I am confirming it. Yeah, generally OSU, o, OUSDI, yeah. It, it isn't likely to change locations for any reason because of the way the, uh, the DOD is organized. This is not a... This is, this is an intelligence operation to gather data, analyze it, evaluate it, and, and recommend courses of action. So that falls into the intelligence uh, area. I got, a, I got a quote from the DOD um, that said that ATIP did investigate and research unidentified aerial phenomenon. Does it still investigate unidentified aerial phenomenon? Yes. 
I'll confirm that ATIP is still going. It's still owned by the uh, OUSDI. It's under a new name, and that's uh, under new management, and that's about all I can say about it. Because you are still under contract, right? No, there's no contract. It's an informing consulting right now because they don't have uh, a, an appropriation to fund external contractors. So I'm I'm a unofficial. I'm I'm just a consultant, and I'm not getting paid to do it. It's just what happens. <laughs> <clears throat> But you have signed some kind of NDA, correct? No, don't need to. I have security clearances. Okay. Uh, and I've got a history in this business going back to 1996. So the uh, all of the, the uh, program director knows me very well. He knows my boss very well. He knows my former boss very well. But So if you are not contracted, nor why can't you reveal the name of the program? Well, because I still have security clearances on the record. So, you know, under, under those conditions, we're still, we're, we're still patriotic Americans. We don't like to talk about sensitive stuff, even if we don't have a contract. Okay. Um, it's the rules of the road over there. You know, you have did, some informal and formal rules. Why would the Pentagon say that officially to the press? Why would the Pentagon say that ATIP was shut down? Uh, let me tell you something about the Pentagon. It is not true that the public relations office knows everything that's going on, especially if it's a classified program. There's no automatic procedure by which they are briefed on everything. They're, they don't receive information. They'd be flooded with information that they don't know what to do with. So basically, uh, they would have to find out about something after the fact in order to make a, co a public comment about it. They, are, they don't know what the... Let's say, let's say they're the right hand. They don't know what the left hand is doing. And that's how, the, that's how your government operates. That's how the Pentagon operates. When they said that statement, they uh, were only slightly correct. The ATIP by that name no longer exists. But, the, uh, but as an organization under new leadership, it does exist with the new name. So that statement is, is incorrect. And that's not because somebody's lying. It's because they simply don't know the answer. And they did not know who to ask to get that answer. To get that information from. All right. When when they came out and said that Luis Elizondo had nothing to do with ATIP whatsoever, the Pentagon that said this. That was a horrible, wrong piece of public relations. That was absolutely incorrect. They did not know what they were talking about. My boss went to report to Lou at the Pentagon in the OUSDI offices during the ATIP era. So that's right. You know who my boss is? Hal Putoff, right? Dr. Hal Putoff? Right. So your boss reported to Lou. Yeah. And I've been over there too. I didn't report to Lou. I wasn't involved with Lou at that time, but I've been I've been involved with the new management. So are you are you guys still investigating UFOs at the Pentagon? Uh yeah. I would say yeah. Of course. They've they never went away. They never went away, Steve. They're still there. They're still coming up and causing uh, aviation havoc because they're getting in the middle of uh, military aviators uh, operations and that's dangerous. That's dangerous for those pilots. I'm going to ask one more time. Could, sure. Uh, could you at least give me a clue, nugget, breadcrumb about the current ATIP? Anything? Uh, that's about all I have for you. Actually. All right. Okay. okay. That's about it. I tried all my I best, is, Eric. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's about it. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.